go for a ride? Oh, let me see hey, if I can open it. Locked. I know, there we go. <laughs> Gotta keep the riffraff wow. out. Make them work for this it. This is a seat. I know. You have to work for it. All right, so where Heck are we going? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, Trek CX Cup, right? Yeah. I appreciate you giving me a ride. Yeah, no problem. Um, uh, yeah, I was gonna ride my bike, but uh, this. Yeah, this is way better. This is so much better. This is all the fun without any fitness. What are we in? We are in a 2016, a Porsche 2016 Cayman GT4. It is a flat six, naturally aspirated. Naturally aspirated? Naturally aspirated. Do you have to pay extra for natural aspiration? I think it just comes with the price. <laughs> right. 385 horsepower. Uh, it's a really fun car to drive. We got the race seats. Um, it's a six speed, so I get to shift. Uh, one of my favorite parts is that rev matches on the downshift. So if you're not great heel toe on the track, um, the car does it for you. So yeah, it's pretty exciting. Do you, uh, do you race this thing? I do a little bit, uh, mostly autocross. I don't do any open wheel or wheel to wheel racing. It's too expensive. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we do some autocross and we do some track days on the track. So it's uh, it's been really fun. It's a fun car to drive. It can be a handful at times, but uh, super predictable. Um, it's just a good time. But Now there's a bike on the back. Oh, there is a bike on the back, yes. Are you good with that? <laughs> I kind of forgot because I can't <laughs> see it in the rear view. But it's on its, it's got a seersucker rack. Um, and it hasn't come off yet, so that's a bonus. Yeah, we'll knock on uh, yeah, I think it's fine. Wolverine vinyl. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, uh, since we're traveling, uh, let's talk some bike racing, eh? Yeah, let's do it. Um, shoot. 15 time national champion. 15 time national champion. Is that yeah. crazy? Let's see, how old are you right now? A 40. Minus 15. I was 25. Yeah, yeah, that's right, 25. I think my racing age is 24 when I um, won my first one. Um, or no, racing is 25. I think that's 24. I, don't, I can't, it's hard to remember because I, I just got back from Athens Games racing on the Paralympic team. Um, and that's kind of how I remember. Like it was 2004 when I won the first um, one. Yeah, because Athens was special event too. Uh, I bet you were on the track? Tandem? Okay, yeah, tandem. So we did track and road. Um, pursuit, kilo, sprints on the track, and then... Um, With a sighted... Uh, a blind athlete. Blind yeah, Chris athlete. Witzel. Yeah, yeah Chris very Witzel. Cool. You've done that since, haven't you? I mean, didn't you do that for a while? Um, I did it from 2002 through 2006. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it was really, it was fun. It was a great experience. I definitely enjoyed it. Here we go. Um, so you win your first cross nationals in 2004. Yeah. Could you ever have imagined 15 straight years? No. Even like thinking about winning two or three in a row. I mean, I was just, I, I was taking it one year at a time then. And I'm take, I still take it one year at a time and try not to think of the years. Um, I think after this winning in Louisville, it's my 15th, that's when it finally dawned on me because people pointed out, but also I was, it's a 15 year streak from 25 to 40 of winning national championships. So it, it meant a lot to me and it, it, it's been really fun like to have that kind of consistency for that long because in the sport of cyclocross, it's not easy. And then just luck's been on my side. I have some health issues in the past, so the fact that I haven't had to deal with those, like actually for nationals, like I've had some issues, but luck has been on my side where I've been able to perform and get the result um, regardless of kind of how I was feeling or like maybe the conditions suit me, the day suits me, like things have come together. Um, so I think to win that many, there's definitely a little bit of luck involved, but there's also like the proper preparation, make sure I do everything right. Mark does everything right. My bikes are running great. Um, yeah, just so I don't have any fixable mistakes, you know? Yeah. Is road in the summer part of your training plan, like to get speed in, yeah. into your legs? Yeah, I like to do um, like 
crits. I'm a big fan of racing crits because they're really fun. Um, I've got, this year I actually got hurt. I broke my arm racing a crit, so that's unfortunate. It is unfortunate. It is. Um, but every year I change it up. Sometimes I try to do some enduros to work on like the descending and the fun part. It's just really good for fitness and you're pretty much doing a VO2 downhill and so you're really focused while you're redlined, um, which I think is great for like being a good crosser. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about your uh, Criterion crash right yeah. there. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's definitely. You had kind of a, you probably didn't have your normal jingle cross that you would like to have. No. 22nd, no. and uh, I, I saw you favoring that arm for sure. I was, and I'm still favoring a little bit. I don't have the strength um, in my upper body right now. I haven't been able to do any upper body work or lift things. And I, I usually do core and upper body and push-ups and such. Um, which I haven't been able to do. And that I actually feel the difference when I'm racing um, cross. You really need upper body strength in order to be good at it just because you're constantly pulling on the bars and um, getting, going up a hill, accelerating out a corner or shoulder your bike. So I do notice it and I, Iowa wasn't great, definitely hurt, but a week later, I'm seven weeks out now and it's definitely feeling much better. So. I think I'm um, coming along, but it's never never quickly enough. Like I want to yeah. be healthy, I want to be well. Like I think my fitness is good, but it's kind of hard to tell when um, I can't really push as hard as I want to and really get on top of the pedals and pull back on the bars. Um, so 15 years, yeah, it's a long time. What are some of the um, changes that you've seen in cyclocross? that you like? Um, the TV coverage, especially in Belgium. We've got a lot of lot more coverage for the women's race, which is amazing. Um, and then the prize money is slowly improving. The con start contracts are slowly improving. So it's definitely improving. I don't know if it's quickly enough. Like I definitely wish everything was equal straight away, like the way Mountain Bike did it. We're just like, we want to pay equal prize money across the board, men and women, let's just do it. Whereas the other disciplines, road, track, mountain, they're always, or road track cross, they're always um, dragging their feet with the equality stuff. So it's coming along, like definitely when I started racing cross um, in early 2000, I mean, it, it, it wasn't nearly where it is today. We have a lot more support, coverage, like respect, more media attention. So all of that's good. Nice. Um, it's all good, it's coming along. Um, well, you, I'm sure you get sick of people asking you about this, but, you can't race cross at this level forever. No, you can't. Uh, do That's you think about like what retiring? is beyond that? No, <laughs> not retiring even, but what what's beyond racing at this level? Um, I don't, I'm not sure yet. Like I'm gonna stay in the bike world. I'm, I'm sure I'll still do some coaching. Um, I think about getting my real estate license. I love real estate, so I think I'll do that. And I also wanna go back to school for nursing. So I'm not quite sure. I'm kind of all over the place with like what I want to do. But I think short term, like once I retire, I'll do, I'll get my real estate license and kind of work on that, do some coaching, and then go back to school huh, um, cool. as I'm doing that. Very cool. Yeah, that's kind of like the, that's kind of the plan. Things can change, but yeah. I'm, I'm hoping I can do it that way. So I did a movie on the Iditarod Trail Invitational this oh, last winter. Yeah, yeah, okay. A uh, thousand miles to know. Okay. Rebecca Rush, who's done some cyclocross, yeah. a little bit of cyclocross, yeah. uh, she did the 350 mile race to McGrath yeah. on a fat bike. Yep. Do you ever think about doing something crazy like that? No, absolutely not. That would have no interest? I'm just, I don't like that kind of endurance riding. I like to ride my bike fast and when I'm done, be done. I've got about maybe six hours in me before I crack. And I know that, like mentally, I'm just not going to get over that lift. Like I could pretend to push through it or say I'm going to push through it. <laughs> I know my limits and I'm like, no, I don't I don't think I would do it. No. Like the people who can do the endurance like Rebecca can, like she's amazing at that. And like there's certain I think personality for it. Um, but I don't think that's something I want to do. Yeah. I mean uh, right do you know now, where we are right now? I don't. But I think I need to go right. <laughs> I was gonna loop back around awesome. that. I think I know where we are actually. We'll see. Uh, so no thousand mile I did a rod fat bike thing, but what about something like Leadville or Dirty Kanza? Jens and Sven did uh, yeah. Dirty Kanza last year. Any of that appeal to you? I don't know. 
Like right now, the answer would be no, but I think things could change. And I hear they're really good, good events. Like I don't ever see me doing doing Leadville just because that altitude and that riding is not something I, I think I'd want to do. Um, but Kansas, maybe. Like maybe the short version of Kansas. I won't do 200 miles on gravel. Like that'll do my head in. I I hate riding gravel for that long. So I could see myself maybe doing the 100 miler. Um, but I don't know if I do the 200. I yeah. feel like I would. I'd want to stop. And I hate giving up, so yeah. like I'd be torn because I'm like I'm not a quitter, but I sure don't enjoy this anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get that. And then I'd be stuck and being miserable for five hours. So yeah. yeah, that's where I am. Very cool. Yeah. Um, you also are, you know, such an influencer, such a role model, yeah. such a mentor to so many. Um, and really not even just women, but yeah. especially women. Yeah. Um, uh, Katie Keo. Yeah. I talked to her dad maybe two years ago. Okay. By the way, he uh, he beat me at Jingle. He and I raced he, uh, each other. He's pretty he, fit, though. Yeah, he's a good he is fit. Yeah, I think... Um, even even with my bike being blessed by the Katie. Yeah, I think Katie gets some of the genetics from him. Yeah. She's you know, a great athlete herself, so comes from somewhere and uh yeah I, I, I know her dad's pretty strong so <laughs> um but he was eternally grateful for the time you spent with yeah. katie it was fun like i loved working with katie and she's she's kind of she's very mature she's very responsible she's very thoughtful um sensitive but she learns and she learns so quickly like she's like a sponge like you can tell her once and she remembers and then if you ever repeat yourself, she's like, I know, I know, I, I listen, I know. Like, and it's very cute. Like, granted, you know, she's older now. This is back when she was, like, teenager, like, uh, early 20s. Um, but, yeah, she's just such a good learner. And she, you tell her to do something, and she tries it, and she does it. And uh, it's really fun working with somebody um, who wants to learn, is willing to try it, and push themselves. And she's one of those. Yeah. Um, I mean, I haven't worked with her for a long time, but... Uh, you know, she's a friend of mine. We both live in the Springs, and uh, I love seeing her grow and develop as an athlete and a person. Um, yeah, she's doing well, and it's, it's really good to see that kind of growth just as a human. How do you view your role in that development of U.S. cycling? Um, I, it, I struggle because, like, as an athlete, and I'm, I'm still competing against everybody, and I still want to do well for myself and my results. So what I do is I try to give back as much as I can. I try to, like if somebody, you know, answer questions if people need um, direction on anything, um, like advice, guidance, like, you know, I'm, I'm there to help. And uh, I try to kind of give back as I can and do clinics and um, just help where I can, but yeah. also still knowing that, like, I have to think about what I'm doing in my racing and kind of what, uh, how much time I can give? Yeah, for sure. Do you ever stall this thing out? I do. Yeah, yeah. It's mainly um, because, like, I'm lazy with the clutch sometimes, and I like, suppose this is a pretty solid clutch. It's like, a pretty solid clutch. It, it's, and it's not really like a 20-year-old Mazda no. that no. gets it, pretty loose. Yeah. It's a, it's, and it's kind of mechanical, so like you can, you definitely um, need to give her when you're letting the clutch out and give her gas. Yeah. Um, uh, all right. So Noble and uh, Keo uh -huh. and freaking Clara. Clara, oh my gosh. Oh Clara. my goodness. She um, impressed me at Iowa. It was so great to see because like she had a good season last year and she she's been progressing, getting better. But man, like this year she's riding really well. Yeah. Her skills are good. Um, I was happy to see her like podium at Iowa. I mean, that was amazing. It was so great to see. So we've got definitely have, we've got some really strong girls coming up um, that have technical skills as well as a desire to race and to, to fight for it. Um, Katie Klaus is also really strong. She's doing great. She's still young. And, yeah, so, she had a great race in Iowa. Yeah, yeah. So it's, um, I mean, then we've got more juniors racing in the World Cups like at Iowa and more juniors racing U23 at these World Cups. And you can see um, kind of just the progression and you know once you once you give 
women and girls opportunities and bikes and support and it's amazing what they can do um, for sure and now they've got the opportunities like i didn't have those opportunities when i was that age like my parents supported me and that was great um but it wasn't like it is today yeah like, right it, uh, right it's not the same so i love to see how much it's improved <laughs> there's a fan i know um, I love to see how much it's how much it's improved so speaking of that improvement yeah. and, and their improvement how's that translate to you in your season um i'm not sure because like i i haven't been able to ride as fast as i'm capable with my arm so i don't know where i am like i think my power numbers are good like i'm i was feeling good until i broke my arm so like the progress for how i was going to compete this year looked good um but I don't know, everyone's getting faster too. Yeah. So, and I think it's a deeper pool and everyone's faster and as it should be. Um, the whole point of, you know, um, promoting and progressing women's cycling is so there's more of us riding fast. Um, and I think that's great. Yeah, I want to have a good world championships. I want to do well in the World Cup, so those are kind of my focuses. Um, I also think me doing, I'll do better at the end of the season just because my arm, I just need a little bit more time. And cross is a long season, like I go through February, so right. generally you're riding well now, you're not riding well in February. You definitely have to pick and choose um, where you want to be riding fast. And also, like the older I get, the more I really have to focus on the recovery and picking and choosing the races I need to do, and not just try to do all of it. I yeah. could do all of it back when I had a ton of energy, you know, 10 years ago, but now, oh, I'm just feeling it. I'm, yeah. I definitely noticed the difference. So, so it sounds like you're kind of okay with 22nd at Jingle, or? Well, as okay as, as you can be as an athlete. Like, I'm not happy with it. Um, I was pretty disappointed with breaking my arm and, and kind of losing out on some, you know, U.S. World Cup points. Right. Um, but I'm happy I finished. I'm happy I did it. I'm happy I kind of salvaged it and at least got some points. Yeah. So, I mean, that was positive. Um, but no, as a result wise, like, okay, I I kind of saved it from nothing, but when I'm, you know, podium capa capable, yeah. it's hard to get 22nd. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm that's sure. unfortunate. Humbling. Yeah. Um, humbling, maybe. It's not so much humbling, because I definitely carry quite a bit of humility with me, just because I've had so many disappointments. And I just know, like, how hard I work for how much I get disappointed. Um, I granted I've had some really good results too, but like lately it's been less results and more disappointment. And so I don't want to get used to that feeling. I want to, I like winning. I like working hard. I like being successful. Um, so that's what I try to do. Like I try to set up my life balance and training to be successful. And so, you know, when things don't, don't go the way I want them to, it's always disappointing. Yeah. You know, just what, as an athlete, I think we're all kind of. You know, we all work really hard, we all want results, and, you know, we can't all get them all the time. What's your gut, honest gut, for tomorrow? Um, if I'm between 12th to 20th, I think that'll be good. Yeah. If I'm in front of that, I would, I don't want to say I'd be surprised, but I don't know how my arm's going to feel. Yeah. It's hard to know. And I don't know if it's going to be muddy. If it, I would like it to be muddy because I do better at that stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I would definitely need to be better than I am. <laughs> so, 12th to 20th tw with maybe yeah. leaning towards 12. Yeah. More like, than 20. Yeah. Top 10 would be ideal. Yeah. But I wouldn't be disappointed with 12. Got 20th, it. I would still be like, really? Yeah. It just depends on how my arm feels. Like, it's definitely getting better. It's definitely getting better. Um, and I could pull up on the bars a little bit better today. So I just, I can't shoulder the bike yet, and I can't uh, really pull, pull up the front end well. So there's a couple of technical features that I really wish I could do. It'd be a lot quicker, but I just can't. So I'm yeah. going to be as efficient as I can. Uh, and then... Well, we are pulling in We are. To, uh... One last acceleration before <laughs> I have to drive slow and safe. <laughs> right. 
Uh, well, I appreciate the ride. Yeah, save me from having to ride my bike all those miles. Yeah, yep. I know. Golly. It was like doesn't take any fitness, and no. you get a little bit of adrenaline. Life um, is uh, life is good. Yeah, it's not so bad, that. huh? Yeah, yeah. Sure. well, good. I enjoyed it. It was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Cycle car stars and cars. Stars and cars. Over here. Um, thanks for joining me. <laughs>